Hello and welcome back to Roleplay R&D week number seven, hour number three. We have all rested and I think it is time for us to continue on. Awesome. So, uh, what's the plan? Where do you guys want to go now? I There's go to this... the, the area where the d dumbbell was immediately. Okay, so that's off to the right where, um, where this similar sort of matte section of wall is. It reflects the light very differently. Yeah, I would say I wake up maybe a little bit before everyone else and then spend my time studying the door. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you should uh, tell me your spells also. Oh, oh okay, you, you are correct. Uh, can I roll to uh, discern realities around the door? Yeah, absolutely. Is that wisdom? Yes. Well, I got some XP for it. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Mm hmm. Discern realities around the door. The first, whoever wakes up first, I turn to them and go, This! That's a door! <laughs> door! <laughs> yeah. Door! It's like, door! Hey, door! D O O R. <laughs> okay, cool. I think he may have drank a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, nothing immediate happens, but um, you don't. You don't see anything strange or unusual about the door. You know, just looks like a door to you. Well? Uh, how about the rest of you? Now that you're all waking up, um, do you feel inclined to follow uh, Rock's lead? Yeah, I mean, I already examined the door. I'm, I'm going to go pick up my traps. None of them okay. were affected throughout the night. As you said, we were safe. So I'm going to go pick them. Pick both of those back up. Um, if I can wedge the dagger back out of this, the wheel, but if I can't, then that's fine. Uh, no, you can. You can wrench the dagger back out of the door. I would like to go join uh, Rock by the door. Yeah. Okay. Rock's God said that was the way to go, so I'm in. For STR. Awesome. So who's <laughs> opening the door? Well, I, I guess before we do anything like that. I asked Lobelia, like, is this safe to open? I examined it the night before and I didn't see anything. Um, I can look at it again if you'd like me to, Rock, just to reassure you. Uh, probably, probably the best. I, I have no issue going through this door, but if we could perhaps have more information, that's always good. All right, and this is the door with the wheel, right? Yes. So as I take out, I, I mean, I take out the dagger and I kind of examine the doorway again. Am I seeing anything different? It does look pretty much the same as I left it the night before, other it than... Looks, it looks the same as you left it the night before. I, as Rock is standing in the doorway, I start re scrolling the wheel to open the door. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty good to me. Yep, it looks just fine. So, um, you managed to uh, wheel open this door. It... it it opens fairly easily. It um, the hallway in front of you is uh, it's carved fairly similar to like the rest of the architecture that you've seen in Fen's Arcanery, and um, yes, and it, uh, it it moves forwards about thirty or forty feet, as you can see by the light of the torch. Ah, incidentally, um, Rock, your shield is no longer lit since you dropped it in the battle. Uh, okay. All right. That worked. <laughs> <laughs> but you've still, got like, well, candle. <laughs> you've still got Lobelia's candle. You've still got this torch, so there's still a uh, warm, glowing light out to a near distance. Um, so, yeah, uh, this, this hallway continues forwards about 30 feet, but in the middle of it... Um, there is another like crack in the wall off to your right, okay. and the hallway the hallway dead ends in another door just like the one you you moved through before. Um, are there are there any like rocks on the ground in front of us? Yeah, I, I pick up a rock on the ground and cast light on it. Okay, do I have to roll for that? It's a rote. Um. Yes. Just a 2d6 or? It's 2d6 plus your wisdom. Which I believe, okay. Six. <laughs> <laughs> Does that yeah, even go okay. off or do I forget it? Um, 
it goes off and you forget it. And yeah. all of a sudden, everyone in the party glows with a brilliant <laughs> blue light. Well, no, oh, no I get to control the color of this one. Like, yes. is it the I'm same like, every Ooh. single one? Yeah, everyone is. Is it a rainbow? Oh. No, I'm saying is it the same time, same color every time I cast it? Oh, uh, it's up to you. Uh, this one it'll be it'll be red. Okay, a brilliant red light. Everybody is glowing. Like a crimson very red, bright. a really deep red. Lobelia I'm is fabulous. <laughs> yeah, Lobelia is stoked. She's like, woo. Quellum High and really Radis sort of look down now. at themselves in consternation. Um, yes. And is the rock as well? Yes. The rock is. <laughs> I take. I take. <laughs> I'm not speaking in the third person. I take the rock and throw it down the hallway towards the end. All right, you throw it down the hallway. It lights the hallway brightly down at the other end. Um, you can see everything in this hallway very clearly by this red light. And you said there was a crack as well, like a. Yeah, there's like a, a human-sized crack in the right wall, about halfway down this hallway. Hmm. I want to go examine. I'm going to go examine the crack. Awesome. Uh, you, you get up close to the crack, looking at it, peering at it, uh, peering into it. You look a ways down the crack, and you can see that at the other end, uh, probably 10 or 15 feet, it's, it's just like a jagged crack in the rocks that leads off. Um, it actually it, it curves upwards a little bit. And it, it zigs and zags a bit so it, you can't see anything at the other end. But there is definitely um, sort of a warm cinnamony smell coming out of this crack. And there is uh, a yellow light from down at the other end. All right. I like whisper into Belle's ear. She doesn't know I'm behind. And I just go, cube. <laughs> <laughs> Turn around and like what? What are you Cube. talking about? All right. Um, you know, the last time you travelers went down a crack, it didn't turn out so good. But perhaps the second time might be more worthwhile than the first. I don't know if we want to go down this one. It looks like it. You know, it goes for ten to fifteen feet before it starts curving upwards and it zigs and zags, and I can't really tell where it's going. So if we if we go this way. Uh, we're, we're taking a risk. Um, also, there's this weird cinnamon smell. And it's kind of glowing yellow light down the hallway. Or it, down the... It smells delicious. I, I would volunteer to go first and, and check it, it out. It smells delicious. I want and I, I would be happy to call back to you if everything is okay. Maybe I will go with Magnus. Out, I will follow Magnus. Maybe we should check Magnus. out the other... The other direction before we decide which uh, direction we want to go. Well, why don't you check out the door and Magnus and I will go find the source of this wonderful cinnamon. Perhaps a, a woman baking us some muffins for our Indeed. adventure. I, I lean over you to Lobelia and, and go. You stick look on things, don't you, Weinman? I, it's cinnamon. I, I lean into Lobelia and I'm like, I think they got high before we left. <laughs> <laughs> I whisper back. We won't go um, far, we promise. All right. If, if we see anything, Magnus, won't we agree to run away? We will. Don't eat it. <laughs> Don't eat anything <laughs> you find. <laughs> Let me see that before I am an experienced brewer. There's all kinds of poisons that people put in things. You don't even know. Um, all right, I'm going to go over to the other door and floor before door, going to examine it and make sure that there are no traps okay. um, and see if I see anything else that looks odd to me. All right, uh, roll your 2d6. Hmm. Not as good as I would have liked. So you get to ask one question. Hmm. All right, I guess I'm going to say, is there a trap here? And if so, what activates it? Um, you, you look closely around the door, and uh, just on the inside of the door, you see that there's like a little outcropping of stone that sort of hangs over the door frame. Uh, and it looks like it's loose, and it actually moves on like a hinge. Uh, you do think that opening the door will trigger some kind of trap. All right. 
Meanwhile, um, uh, Lord Wyman and Magnus, you are proceeding up the crack. I'm following my nose basically towards this smell. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you you end up um, you end up sort of up at the upper end of the crack. You can see um, as when you get up the crack, it breaks into a new room, a new space that actually has the same architectural style, Magnus, as the one you were running through before. It's this huge cyclopean sort of proto-Aztec ruin sort of temple space. It's a huge room, probably, you know, 80 feet by 100 feet with lightly sloped walls and massive columns in the middle. Um, And there in the middle of the floor of this room, there's like a pit that's just filled with coals. And rolling around on the coals are three serpent-bodied men with like flaming skin and black ashen hair that's like floating up around them. They each have tridents that are like right next to them and they're just sort of rolling around on these coals. And this like cinnamon smell is very strongly filling the air. Now, you realize that you can't move forwards anymore because there are bars as if like a cage had descended around this um, around this entrance that you're looking through. Mm. Perhaps back it's... and I say, I, I don't think I'm hungry anymore. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps it's better these bars separate us from these beasts. And perhaps there's another way into this room. But this doesn't appear to be it. So our only, our, our only escape is through the way we came. Well, uh, looking around a little more closely, you see that there is actually a chain attached to this cage that rises up to the ceiling where it meets a winch and it looks like it heads across the ceiling a ways. Uh, You know, you don't necessarily see where it ends up, but it seems like there is some kind of mechanism attached to this cage. I was hoping more for uh, uh, the Baker scenario that you laid out before we Mm. started heading up here. Perhaps we should gather the rest of the party and then come back and investigate. Yes, let's uh, tell them what we've seen and uh, we'll decide whether or not we want to go through the door or perhaps find out what's cooking. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I start start to backtrack, yeah. Meanwhile, (laughs) um, I'm checking out where the rock is uh, going over the ledge and trying to figure out how this trap and contraption works and going to try to disable it. Okay, go ahead and roll plus your dex to disable this trap. Oh, very nice. How do you do it? So it looks like the rock um, is a little loose and it's on the ledge and possibly once you open the door that it would come down and do something. I don't know what it's going to do. So I'm going to try to disable where the rock is connected to the little ledge thing Mm -hmm. and remove that. And hopefully when I open the door, nothing bad happens. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, you managed to, uh, you just like jiggle the ledge a little bit and uh, seat it more strongly in the slot that it's slotted into. And you you get to a point where you think it would hold if you open the door. Go forth, Rock. Open that door. What she didn't tell you is that she also did it blindfold. (laughs) She like put on a blindfold before she did it. It was pretty awesome. And behind her back. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a there's a door in front of her that she's basically telling me to open. Right? Yes. Yeah. I, I, there's a door in front of you that I'm also telling you to. Open. Uh, how far away is the rock at the end of the, the hallway? Can I? Go oh, to... you're like right next to it if you're next to the door. Yeah, yeah I just yeah. go. I I pick the rock up and and put it away. Cool. Uh, and and then um, do I hear them coming down from the stairs or no through the crack? Yeah, you hear them. You hear them approaching. I like go to open the door, then I hear them approaching and say, "Wait, we should, we should check with them first before we move forward, and turn and wait to the, or turn and, and look at the the crack, waiting for them to walk through." Okay, they come Good around idea, the corner. Sir Rock. Say, uh, did you did you find the cookies you were seeking, Lord Wyman? Magnus, tell them <laughs> tell them what we found. There were no cookies. No. <laughs> Not cookies. return with any cinnamon rolls. I am disappointed. There are. Uh, a couple, three to be exact, um, snake-like creatures writhing around in some coals and ashes upstairs. 
Did you engage them? Oh, I think I saw one I of these not. earlier. It had no. a giant trident and a, a lantern thingy. What, that, oh. That's a pretty accurate description. <laughs> that's right. You did see one with what yeah, we thought was, oh, was a spear as well. Yeah. Was it the Spear of Souls? Do no. we know? It wasn't the same. That's was. the Spear of Souls. He's well, <laughs> either way, the, the creatures are separated by a gate. There appears to be some mechanism to potentially open them, but I most certainly have to believe that we would engage in mortal combat with these beasts to advance any further. Say, so we found another door. It's, it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I put my ear up to the door to try to see if I can hear anything or discern what's behind it. Um, I feel like that's a discern realities. Okay. I uh, I'm just fishing for XP here at this point. Uh, yeah, and I get it. Fuck yeah, give me that XP. All right, cool. <laughs> and uh, you hear from upstairs a voice that sounds like um logs popping on the fire it says what is that strange red light from down in this in this oh, irritating crevasse and another voice says i know not it is possible we should investigate what do you do uh i i take my head off the the door and say well someone knows we're here and uh, i think they're coming to investigate should we try to spring a trap on them that's exactly what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. Oh. How about how about we let, let's do a, a bait. I'll, I'll be the bait. We'll get them to come wherever, maybe at the end of this hallway or something. I'm not the one that makes the traps. You are, Lobelia. Then mm -hmm. then we can all surprise them somehow. Okay. We could all, all right. run to one end, and someone can crawl into the crack, and as we taunt them forward. We'll pull a rope and trip them up, and then we will spring on them. <laughs> I love this idea. Fantastic. What if All they right. come from behind the crack? What do you oh. mean? The crack is halfway down the hallway. Okay. Right? Uh, right, right. Yes. But I'm just, okay. I, I, I trust your plan, Lord Ryman, and hope that I don't get stabbed in the back from All behind right, so me in the crack. Rock, where are you going to be standing? Just so I'm aware. I, I guess in the crack, unless someone else wants to stand here. Okay. Who's going to pull the rope? I can pull Bell, the rope. Bell has a rope. Yeah. I can I can handle the trap. No one has to pull a rope. I can set up a spring loaded trap. I basically okay, I kind of show him what I'm doing. I take like the the line of rope and I make like a what do you a trip wire? I make like a trip wire from one end of the hallway to the next as far as I possibly can. Um and I set that up and if they are to hit that um, then good rock can just come behind them and do something. I'm going to also hang out behind them because backstabby. I okay, like so uh, show me where you're putting the trap on this map, Lobelia. This is the door, right, that we found? Or is that the crack? That's, That's the, the crack. crack. This is the, the door? The door is the squiggle. Oh, here's okay, the okay, at the end there. of the hall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And here's the crack. And the voices are coming from the crack. Oh, the voices are coming from the crack, not from the door. Correct. Okay. Oh, what? That oh. changes things a little bit. Wait, so I, I put my head to the door and I hear voices I coming drop? from the crack? The you crack. heard voices coming from behind you from yeah. the crack. Yes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I... So That's I will put the tripwire here. <laughs> yep. Sounds <laughs> good. Um, um, is like, Wait, and what? the spring-loaded trap on this side, I think. So when it does come out... They get hit by that. Okay, and I'm cool. going to put a dagger in that trap so it'll like hit the first person that comes out with the dagger. A dagger? Yeah, with the black dagger. Oh, okay. Sure. So yes. once they hit it, it, um, it kind of goes out. You hear the voices from up this crack shout, uh, Sithrast, let go the chain. Let us raise the cage. And uh, you hear this clanking sound. <laughs> and... Uh, this this cinnamony smell comes wafting down this crack, and it smells uh, even stronger. And there's like a warm wind that begins blowing out of this crack. Um, on which side of the crack uh, are you all? 
I'm on that side, so I can Sounds get a clear good. attack. I don't know. You're like right next to it. Yeah, yeah. Like okay. I'm let's on say the I have. Opposite. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Wait. No, go ahead. I'm, I'm just on the opposite side. Okay, I'll just say that I I've got like my back pressed up against the wall, and I've got two hands on my sword, ready to to kill the second thing that comes through. Because I'm hoping the first thing gets. How are you by guys doing that circly thing? You just uh, hold down on wherever like you want. Like an old. Oh, I am. I'm back here where I'm where I'm pinging, and I've got um, one hand on on uh, Mikhail. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I see them trigger the trap, I'm gonna let him go and let loose an arrow from uh, uh, this location. Okay, cool. Yeah, sounds good. All <laughs> right. And I, I tell the rest of the uh, the hirelings to stay to my right and wait for my call. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Um, you hear these these like the slithering sound of scales over rock, and they come fairly close. And then they say, um, "They say, wait. I sense something strange." And uh, another voice says, "Ah, let me go first. I will uncover whatever it is." And the voice that you were hearing before, the one that sounds like cracking wood in a fire, it says, "No." I sense deception. I have special skills in circumstances like these. And we all can hear that very clearly. Yes, it's coming from like just around the corner. Yeah, it, when I when that when I hear that, I, I shoot Lobelia a look with a, a, a very intense stare that says like, "Pull the, the trap." <laughs> is the cra yeah? Is the crack open? So like, if I start the trap, it'll just go. The dagger will go flying. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I. I pull the wire and I just let it go. Or okay. I cut, yeah, you, you reach around, pull the wire, and the trap uh, sends a dagger hurling, and you hear a voice go, Kah! <laughs> uh, and then you hear a couple of other voices say, um, two arms, two arms, we are ambushed. And uh, from around the corner comes surging like a seven-foot-tall humanoid on this massive, long, and powerful serpentine body. Uh, he has, like, fires flickering over his, like, black, like, obsidian-looking body. And he has, like, a long, wispy goatee that looks like it's made of strands of ash. He's holding this powerful spear, which he immediately, as he comes around the corner, he begins stabbing it in Rock's direction. Rock, you get a free attack. Uh, because he didn't know that you were there, but he was just making an attack because he thought there was someone you A know, free nearby. attack without rolling, or...? Right, so deal your damage. Okay. <laughs> Two. Okay. So uh, your, <laughs> your sword goes, like, clanging off against his uh, trident as it comes stabbing towards you. Neither of you manage to do anything to the other, but uh, he comes, like, pushing into the hallway and, like, circling around you so that he's kind of over next to the, um, the trap, and a second one is immediately following in his footsteps. Okay. I tell that when that happens, I, I scream to the hirelings now, and hopefully they rush in. <clears throat> yeah, totally. Uh, Quellum, Hyam, and Radis go like charging in at this one that came over and is standing next to the trap. Um, Ma Magnus, you wanted to like shoot and unleash Mikhail as soon as something came through, right? Yes, yes, I do. So I, so, I let him go. Yeah. Uh, towards the the gigantic seven foot tall guy. Yeah. Snake man, goes, and I would like to it goes charging forwards. Yes, I would like to fire at him, and I want to do a a called shot. Okay. I want to shoot. At his head. As I Sounds see good. Magnus ready his bow, at that point, can I immediately try to forward damage to him? Yes. So go ahead and roll the damage forwards. Okay. Um, I think it's a d4, right? What? Yeah, uh, it's, it's plus one d4, but roll your Well, I, I roll, yeah, yeah. Uh, Wait. 11. All right. Nice. So you, you deliver an inspiring word. So actually, and, um, 2d4. Is it 2d4? Yeah, yeah, because I just got, I just got, yeah. So. so Magnus, you can either just straight deal your damage, or okay. you can do a called shot and roll plus dex. Um, I think I'm just going to straight deal my, uh, it's because of his ability I can straight do my damage. So because he's surprised, uh, in any case where you there's no danger, you don't have to roll at all. You can just I deal see. your damage. So because of that, 
And because you're attacking a surprised enemy at ranged, you can choose to either just deal your damage or make a called shot. Okay, I'll, I'll just deal the damage then. Cool, so that's D8 plus 2D4. Uh, do I roll the damage? Or he, he just rolls the extra damage, rolls, right? Yeah. Okay, awesome. It would have been better if you rolled it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's got to keep up with those sixes, man. <laughs> All right, cool. So uh, your arrow goes, like, stabbing into this thing's spine, and his tail, like, flails around. Um, he's got these three hirelings right up on him, though, that he, he immediately begins stabbing out at them with his trident. Rock, what are you doing? Um, okay, so des- describe what's in front of me. There's this big guy, but then there's three hirelings, and that's all we see. So right in front of you, Rock, directly across the hallway from you, probably like six feet away, there's this big guy with his spear, and the three hirelings are all like wailing on him. From around the corner, turning in Lobelia's direction, is a second salamander uh, leveling his trident in her direction, and you hear more coming down the stairs. Which one looks bigger, the one that I attacked first off? The one that you attacked first off looks bigger, but it also has been hurt. Uh, okay, the one that's going towards Lobelia, I cast mm-hmm. Cause Fear on him Ooh. and then uh, make the object the trident. <laughs> cool. Uh, nice. But I got a roll for that, so let's see if it even happens. Yeah. And that's plus wisdom, right? Yes. Right. Bam. <sighs> Bam! Well, at least it went off. Very <laughs> nice. So, um, yeah, so it immediately, like, shrieks and drops the, um, drops the trident and goes, like, barreling past you. Uh, as it goes, it lays a hand on, um, Hyam's shoulder and, like, sets him on fire. And he just, like, immediately begins burning. Um, Lobelia, what are you doing while this is going on? Is there a bucket of water nearby? (laughs) There is not. Um, but you happen he... to have a wand of frost that is capable of <laughs> yeah. Yeah, distinguishing yeah, yeah. flames, I'm sure, a cone of cold right down that. <laughs> I'm debating what I should do. Okay, yeah, I could probably do cone of cold. What does ice stone do exactly? Do ice storm. Oh, ice, ice storm. storm. Yeah. Storm. Oh, awesome. Or okay. wall of ice, the whole area. Yeah, that's what I was kind of. That's what I was thinking. I was going to do was wall of ice. But actually, I'll do the cone of gold. Um, it's probably going to be bad. How, what do I have to roll? Plus int for this? Yes, to activate your magic device. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, well, uh, yeah, oh, I'm so scared. Okay, well, uh, I would do it because I don't want him to die. Either that or I would grab him and make him stop, drop, and roll. One mm-hmm. or the other. All right. I'm going to yell stop, drop, and roll while I'm also doing this. Okay. Eight. eight. The device oh. functions, but choose <laughs> First one. Time. <laughs> it either loses uh-huh. one charge, it affects another target of my choice, oh, yeah, or the device's effect is halved. Um, lose a charge. <laughs> yeah, I I'll say half damage. Okay, so it has two charges left. Um, this like cone of frosty wind. Uh, threaded with shards of ice goes exploding down the corridor in the direction of the salamander of both salamanders and um, Hyam who is on fire and Rock so uh, Rock are you going to try to dodge this uh, I'm sorry the frosty wind is coming my direction yes <laughs> um, also it has three charges to start or how many charges do yeah have? three charges three. to okay, start so yeah. uh, is there a salamander creature in front of me that yes. it's going to hit Yes. If I stand behind that, will I not be hit by it? Oh, yeah. You can totally dodge behind the salamander. That's what I want to do, yeah. All right, cool. Roll plus yes, your dex. Yes, use the salamander Oh, shield. God, plus my dex? <laughs> Fucking Christ. Well, I get some XP. <laughs> uh, you go, like, leaping to the ground, and uh, this, like, ravaging wind just blasts straight past you. Um, Lobelia, roll 1d6 twice and take the best. <laughs> okay. So, well, I uh, guess it's three. <laughs> you take three damage, Rock, okay. which I guess is two damage or one damage because you weren't using your shield. I have. Oh, yeah, one damage. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Uh, and then the, um, the salamander uh, looks like it takes the full brunt 
of this of this blast um and it it oh no that, it that's... looks like it's nearly extinguished actually um Haim, Quellum, and Radis all try to throw themselves to the ground, but all of them get blasted by this this uh, blast of ice. Haim's fire is put out, but his flesh is just shredded by this shrapnel of ice that goes blasting down. It impacts the second... Oh, yeah, JP. Yes, you're right. Um, Damn it. And uh, <laughs> so Haim is down. Quellum and Radis both look pretty hurt. The um, salamander down at the end of the hallway, the one who's fleeing from his trident, it looks both hurt and scared. His flames are significantly dimmed. From around the corner, you guys hear this, like, crackling words being spoken in some strange alien language, uh, and your ears begin to sort of buzz with a hum of power. Uh, I do have a question. With Cause Fear rolling that low, don't I get to, like, I have to choose to forget the spell for the day or some. Isn't there some? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see exactly what that is. You choose to draw unwelcome attention or put yourself on the spot, or you take minus one on going to cast a spell, or it's revoked. Uh, we'll take the minus one so it plays out into what happened. Cool. All right. And... Um, Yes. So, uh, what do you do now that you hear these words of power being spoken from around the corner? Is this a mind affecting spell? No. Okay. <laughs> I just have to ask. Uh, that is important. And this this giant salamander still right in front of me? Yes. It looks significantly damaged. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and strike at that one. All right. Uh, roll your it. attack. Son of <laughs> shit. So uh, he turns around and, like, strikes out at you with his... I have uh, shield up, by the way, at this point. Oh, shield okay. And sword, shield you and sword. brought your shield out? Yeah. You, um, you uh, bring up your shield as his trident comes slashing in your direction, which is fortunate because he strikes at you with ferocity. Um, roll 2d6 twice. Okay. Six and eleven. You take the best plus three. <laughs> Fourteen damage. Minus four, so ten damage. Yeah. So Damn. 